Well, good morning, church. Thank you for continuing our deep dive. Today, we're in Acts uh, chapter 16, verses 1 to 5. Uh, Derek did a great job on Friday talking about really an amazing passage where Paul and Barnabas, two incredibly godly guys, split over could God use John Mark or not. Now, we know historically that, that John Mark goes with Barnabas and he's used by God. They both are to spread the message. As a matter of fact, we know later on, Paul will call and ask for John Mark to be sent to him. The relationships had been healed. He saw great value in John Mark's life. But because Luke, who's the author of Acts, is a companion with Paul, from this point on, the book of Acts will follow Paul, not because what Barnabas is doing is not important and God uses, but because that's who they're following. Now, Paul's about to go on another missionary journey, and he needs a companion. And so in the city he's in, he sees a guy named Timothy, uh, someone uh, unique. His mother was a Jew, uh, grandmother, a godly Jew. Uh, he was a believer, but his dad was a Greek. And so Paul says, hey, I want to take you with me, but Timothy, in order to do that, I need you to be circumcised. Now, to me, that fascinates me because, again, remember just previously, uh, Paul and Barnabas had fought for the fact that you didn't need circumcision to be a believer or to please God as a Christian. Later on, just going forward in Galatians, Paul will have another companion named Titus, and when the Galatians think Titus should be circumcised, Paul stands up to say, no, certainly not. And yet in the middle of that, here's Timothy, and Paul says, Timothy, you need to be circumcised. Now, now why? I think we see a great leadership lesson here. See, Paul knew circumcision wasn't required, but he also knew the lack of circumcision was going to affect Timothy's effectiveness going forward. See, he knew he was going to be going, as you see Paul's method, he would normally go into the synagogues, and he would share about Christ, and he would reach some Jews, but a lot of God-fearers, those outside who weren't Jews. And he knew that if Timothy wasn't circumcised, those Jewish Jews who need to hear the gospel would be offended by the very fact that, that Timothy wasn't. Also, there were a lot of people still in Creek and key leadership that though they bought in and they accepted the fact Gentiles didn't need to be circumcised, they would be offended because Timothy wasn't and his mother was Jewish. So Paul basically says, Timothy, you need to submit yourself to this. Uh, you need to make this sacrifice so you can be more fully used by God. Uh, you know, we see there are sometimes in leaderships, leadership where we have to have a higher standard on ourselves than we impose on others. I can't remember where I heard it, but one person said the difference between a leader and a dictator is a dictator puts higher standards on themselves, I'm sorry, on others than to do themselves, and a leader puts higher standards on themselves than they do others. And we see this, you know, Paul, remember, there's, there was a controversy he addresses in Corinthians where they were asking, can you eat meat sacrificed to idols? And there were people who were believers who used to worship these idols, and they would give this meat to be sacrificed and be sold kind of at rock-bottom prices. And so, you know, you could buy a great steak at a low price. But Paul said, listen, there is nothing wrong with that meat, but if it caused my brother to stumble, I'll never eat it again. In other words, Paul wasn't saying it was wrong, but Paul understood why would I let that barrier come in that could affect my ministry and what I'm doing. And I think that just comes up in leadership. Sometimes as leadership, in leadership, we have to put higher standards on ourselves than we place on others. Not because we're better, not because we're trying to look above everyone, because we want to move, remove every obstacle that causes someone to stumble, stumble other than the fact that they need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And again, to me, a fascinating passage here where Paul puts a requirement on Timothy uh, that later he doesn't put on Titus. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's Devo, and I hope you continue with our deep dive tomorrow. Thank you for being part of our daily deep dives.